What's going on, everybody? It is Vanglorious. Easy one. It's not gonna be a complete walkthrough. I'm just kind of vlogging, showing you what I'm doing today. All right, so the old charge pipe is off. Uh, you can watch any tutorial, and you'll see that twisting this out is kind of difficult. So I transported the um, the sensors onto the top portion of the charge pipe here and you can see our area as follows so that is open right there i kind of put my intake to the side i have to reassemble that but everything is kind of detailed there i mean like i said you can look on any um <laughs> tutorial on how to do this that's why i didn't do a walkthrough because i didn't have the patience to document all of the process because it's i don't know kind of a moot point right now whoever has charge pipes has already seen one of these tutorial so um yeah that's what i'm doing all right the charge pipe is in also disclaimer make sure you take the old o-ring off of the uh, old plastic charge pipe and put it on this one because this one does not come with one and you don't need to put one on the bottom because it's already fitted with one on the inside so just remember that but yeah ftp charge pipe make sure the couplers are on good uh, this one right here this one on here they're both pretty tight so they shouldn't come off shouldn't have any issues here whatsoever all right charge pipes on take it for a quick test drive make sure everything is everything but looking good it took about an hour that's about it so in other news some of you might have seen on instagram i got a little something from abok so these are the abok pro kit lowing springs Bam. So your boy is going lower. Now, not sure if I'm gonna tackle this job by myself or with somebody, or just go to a shop and just save myself the hassle and just have them put it on. But, you know, I felt like it would be a good idea to put these on for the channel, but I'm still up in the air. So um, we do have Elite Tuner that's coming up on the 18th, and I got a couple things that I need to do uh, with other stuff, so. My hands might be tied uh, in terms of having time to put these on myself, so I might go the option with having a shop put them on. It's great because they come with the bump stops and it comes with the sleeves, so so the sleeves would be for the front and for the rears, obviously, um, they don't have any sleeves because it's a separate piece. So, I mean, these look pretty good. I've heard great things about them. I think the cool thing that um, I was mainly leaning towards is that I run the A-Box on my other car and I love the height of it. I just love how low it is. And it's like, I wouldn't want to go any lower than that because then I would be getting into all sorts of scraping issues. But with that car, I really don't even scrape that much. So I know for the Supra, it should be pretty good. So I'm really excited to get these put on as well. Also went on a test drive to make sure everything was good with the new charge pipe. And I gotta say, everything was fine. I do feel that what Speed Industry said about the throttle response being a little bit more better, I kind of feel that way. It kind of is a little better. So um, I'm feeling the charge pipe so far. I'm gonna keep tools with me just in case because I know some people who get upgraded charge pipes have this thing where sometimes too much boost and then the coupler decides that it doesn't wanna hold, but I made sure everything was tight. So hopefully we don't have that problem, but keeping tools with me just in case because you really don't know. I was able to kind of like think a little bit and uh, this did come with an E50 tune. I might have talked about it before or may not, but uh, long story short is I found a place in my old hometown that has E85. And 
I was also looking and I was like, dude, like I do have map switching. Because in the Ecutech app, you can see um, you have a choice between your 93 map um, that's custom and then the E50 uh, map. So I held down the um, cruise control cancel button. And sure enough, um, the temperature gauge goes to one. And there's this guy here. Construction. The temperature gauge goes to one bar um, on cold. And it goes right on the RPMs, it goes straight to one. And then if you scroll up on your cruise control knob, it goes to two. So like let's say I had like four maps, I could go all the way up to four uh, on the RPM gauge. But yeah, I can only go for one to two. So that is how you would do uh, your map switching. So I'm like really curious to try that because it's, that's really nice. You know, I've seen videos about map switching and it seems like a really cool feature. Especially since you don't have to flash any tunes uh, via laptop. It's all on your phone. Really nice. One thing I love about the beginning of spring is just it's finally getting away from that cold, cold winter that we have. You know, here in the Northeast, it's kind of like <clears throat> when we have winter, you really get hit. If it's not the snow, it's just super, super cold. And it's nice because finally when the spring starts to kind of break even, um, where we're kind of shaking off those uh, low 30 degree weathers, we start to get to like the 50s and 60s. Just so you could just throw on a hoodie, that's like my kind of weather. I like hoodie weather. So that's why like spring and fall are some of my favorite um, seasons. But I do like summer because it's it's finally like hot. You know what I mean? And it's just nice to, to be out. You know, everyone's out. All the events are happening. You know, summer is sheerly uh, an outdoorsy um, events type of uh, season for me. So that's why I, I love summer so much. But enjoying the weather, I would say definitely spring and fall. You can actually enjoy the weather because you're not worried about being too, too hot. And you're not sweating and it's, you're not annoyed because there's a billion people out and they're in your way because it's the summertime. Like, I just feel like you get a better mix of um, season appreciation <laughs> with uh, spring and fall. You know, like the, either the nervous or confused drivers. two days so far so good so I'd say shark pipe was a success everything looks pretty good um, I probably don't need to pop the hood to check because things sound fine um, but yeah that's about it so I'm gonna wrap this video up I've talked to you about some stuff that's gonna be happening soon and I guess you'll just wait and see what happens with the lowering springs like I said, if I'm feeling motivated to do this for the channel, um, <laughs> it's probably going to, if it's just me doing it, it's probably going to take me all day, uh, knowing me, because I'm like very nitpicky with these things. I want to make sure everything is good. Um, but if not, then I'll find a way to get you guys content on, on, you know, how they got installed. Um, probably more so a comparison of stock ride height and what my impressions are while driving it because not only it, are the springs going to drop the car um, like an inch or so but it'll also provide some performance gains so the handling should be nice so I'm probably going to be comparing it to um, um, the springs on my 86 I know it's two different cars and two different setups but I think it'd be cool to um, see if there's if it's that much closer to the handling that I'm used to on my 86 um because not that this is a boat but come on like the a6 weighs less and it shines in suspension you know it shines in cornering all those things whereas this is more power based and yeah you do get some good suspension feel from this because it says the active uh suspension where you know you can go from comfort or sport but you can't beat that raw 
raw feel that you get out of the A6. So um, that'd be great to talk about that. So I'm going to leave you guys on this. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. As usual, like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the content. And I got some other things cranking. So stay tuned, stay blessed, stay safe. Take care. Peace.